killed with one perfect shot to each eye. Can you imagine? Good day, sir. Merhaba. Good day to be alive. And, by extension, a poor day to take a bullet. Do you know what happened here? Officer said there was a duel, shots fired, and then that fellow took his last breath. Reminds me of last year. So the inspectors have been and gone? Of course. Police don't let an undertaker do his work before they finish theirs. Who died? Oh, no, 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 mister. It is not my place to say. Not your place? Nonsense! As you say, you won't mind. Death with dignity. That's all we can hope for, sir. He doesn't need his name out there. You mentioned a previous incident. It was in the old city ruins. I remember the deceased was very rich. Front page news. Very, very rich he was. But a coin makes a poor shield, as I always say. <laughs> and who needs it when a view like this is free? Why are you just standing there? I came to take the deceased to the cemetery, but caught sight of Mother Nature's bounty and had to drink my fill. He won't mind anyway. Let me tell you, friend. The sweet sea air, the calming whisper of the waves. It's a salve for all ills. We're done. This man is no more. He's ceased to be. He's expired and gone to meet his maker. He's a stiff. Reft of life, he rests in peace. You know the rest. The bullet entered the heart at an angle, implying it was fired from an elevated position. He died instantly. Predictably, the rumours were exaggerated. The blindfold is intact, with both eyes unharmed. A Webley top brake revolver. Blank cartridges filled with a wax-covered gelatin bullet. Effectively harmless, even at close range, but leaves a nice red splash on impact. A key for a birdcage? I'll take it. The duelist eventually reloaded his gun, but all the cartridges were filled with red, non-lethal rounds. A blindfold, discarded or lost. Hmm. Your opponent was behind you. You know what? That Undertaker has a point. It is beautiful here.
blank cartridges filled with red wax covered gelatin bullets, most assuredly non lethal, if rather theatrical on impact. A case for dueling Webley revolvers. The corner of the box is broken, likely from being dropped. Gosh, how exciting. I always wanted to be a member of a club. I bet you couldn't join. No good at following orders, are you, Sherry? Ah, a contest then. I shall prove my blind devotion, so to speak, to their inane rules, and you shall eat your words. Red stains, relatively fresh. A Lamat revolver, 42 caliber. One chamber is empty, the others are filled with live rounds. The victim was killed by someone up on the wall. It may have been the referee who took advantage of the duelists while they were blindfolded. Hmm, this seems plausible, but I must consider all options. What if there was another person here? The victim was killed by someone up on the wall. There may have been someone else here, a fourth person waiting for an opportunity to strike. Sometimes I think beauty can blind you, or you can be blind to beauty, you know? Did he see it all around him, do you think, before he covered his eyes and drew his pistol? Can we please leave the nattering behind? Oh, friend, relax. Life's too short to be short with people. Enough tomfoolery. Give me the victim's name. I told you that's his business, not yours. Two men dueled, one man died. When you hit a rock, stop digging. What does this have to do with me? Hmm. Doesn't ring a bell. 
I'm not sure what to say. Hmm. Doesn't ring a bell. I'm not sure what to say. What does this have to do with me? Hmm. Doesn't ring a bell. What does this have to do with me? There is more to this case than meets the eye. The victim fell not to his dual opponent, but a hidden marksman in the ruins. Abandon your oversimplistic ideals and tell me the name of the deceased so his killer can be caught. Oh, that is wrong to be sure. Okay, the man's name was Eric von Staub. I heard the officers say that he lived in Scaladio. At last. You may return to your vacant stare. Day, officer. Miss von Staub awaits you in her boudoir. Good day, miss. I regret to disturb you at this tragic time, but could you spare a moment? Oh, officer. I I've been waiting. Is his body still in that horrible place? A horrible place? <laughs> I should introduce you to the undertaker. But first, you and I shall get to know one another. I am Officer Holmes. I take it you are Magda von Staub, the sister of the deceased? Oh, pardon me. Yes, I am. My deepest condolences, Miss von Staub. Your brother's body will be returned to you shortly, as I believe the case will soon be closed. Nevertheless, there remain some formalities requiring attention. May I ask you a few questions? Oh, uh, uh, if you must. But I'm unsure if I will be of much help. Forgive my intrusion, but I must inquire about your bruises. Did you take a tumble? Oh, oh, I have a weak disposition. It is not so bad, but my skin marks more easily than a peach. It is the least of my sorrows. But, Miss von Staub, 
I can tell you suffered new bruises even before the old ones had healed. I have nothing more to add, Officer Holmes. It is what it is. Do you know if Mr. von Staub had any enemies? Someone that may have sought to do him harm? Enemies? I don't know. He and I did not discuss such matters, and he was rarely called upon by visitors. My brother's only guests were his friendly contests, but I was not allowed to participate. I merely heard it all from my room. Contests? Eric would practice shooting on the patio, and occasionally friends would join him, but I, I couldn't tell you if they ever argued. May I take a look at Mr. von Staub's room? His personal effects may prove invaluable in our understanding of the case. Please do. Here's the key. Where were you when your brother died, Miss von Staub? I was here painting Eric's portrait. My God, you could have asked the servants. Alas, I needed to hear it from your lips. It appears the parents are dearly missed. Our beloved parents, 1875, Baden Baden. Rest in peace. Only German composers feature here. Look at those vases, Sherry. Bet they cost a fortune. It would be a shame if someone broke them. Oh, I love it when you're reckless. Were those Limoges porcelain? You have a keen eye. Well, I suppose it's yours. Next time, shoot with the blindfold. Excellent score. An ointment by a Dr. Herbert with a lavender and pine scent. A handsome portrait of Eric. Miss von Staub does have talent. The rounds have been emptied. The black paint looks thick. It's been mixed with something. The end and the beginning. She covered the locked windows with paintings, but the atmosphere remains oppressive. A sad home for a young woman. man in his 60s. Sir Barnaby Boddington, 1879. A typical crest for a league or a guild. Club Headquarters, 190th Anniversary Celebration.
This whip is well loved and well used. I found burnt letters in your brother's room. I believe they were addressed to you. To me? From whom? They appear to be from some of your suitors. Why did you burn them? I didn't. I didn't even know about them. Eric, he... He never said a word. One of the revolver cases in your brother's room is missing. Do you know where it may be? I'm not permitted in Eric's quarters. I suppose he must have taken it with him. There is an unfinished portrait of your brother in your room. Beautiful to be sure, but one detail drew my attention. Why did you add gunpowder to your black paint? You... you entered my room? I thought you were only inspecting Eric's. It is standard procedure, Miss von Staub. Now, tell me about the gunpowder. Eric's art was his shooting, and this painting is my tribute to him. It felt... appropriate. We're both artists, in different ways. It seems you and Mr. Boddington were to be engaged. Were you as thrilled at the prospect as your brother? Mr. Boddington is... not how I had imagined my husband. But it was Eric's choice. I didn't dare dispute it. Please come in, sir. The gentlemen are waiting for you on the training ground. Down the stairs. Fancy. Not every manor has a custom floor. That is the von Kramkress, the old Prussian noble family. They must be patrons of the club. The floor is so smooth and slippery. I wonder if I could skate on it. How often do you think they check the submission box? My application deserves prompt consideration. Shake a leg. Get him. I'm gonna hurt you. You can overcome the brute now. No more crime for you until next month. It's all yours now. Go for it.
The snuff's ready. Too simple. Give him the pepper snuff. I'm coming for you. Take a rest. No more crime for you and the snuff's ready. Don't pop. Take a rest, my friend. Give him the pepper snuff. Just die! I couldn't miss the party. No more crime for you. Don't cry, you'll... The snuff's ready. You can overcome the brute. Excuse me. I couldn't miss the party. Take a rest, my friend. Too simple. Give him the pepper snuff. I must say, Sherry, that was near perfect. Could it be that you're not completely hopeless? The same ingredient was used in the dueling revolver's ammunition. All these places are perfectly secluded, ideal for private duels. Two glasses with dregs of alcohol. Should I pour us a drink, John? Hmm, a nice apricot aroma. Marillan schnapps, I presume. Half full. Glass crushed underfoot with damp traces still visible. Who the devil are you? I won't go down without a fight. Sherlock Holmes. And if I wanted a fight, you would already be on the floor. Fortunately for you, I'm merely here to ask a few questions. Is that so? Well, come on, pretty boy. How about I fix that nose of yours? Give it a bit more character. Enough. Your compatriots attacked me and I responded. They still have their lives, unlike Mr. Von Staub. True. At least you are not a murderer. Fine, you may speak.
So you are Mr. Von Kram, one of the club's best shots, the referee of the deadly duel, and witness to Mr. Von Staub's murder. Incorrect. I am the best shot at the club. Heinrich Fögen Von Kram. But how did you know I was there? Your clothes, Mr. Von Kram. The dirt on your trousers confirms your presence in the old ruins. And your jacket features a bloodstain from your attempts to save Mr. Von Staub. That is... impressive. It is merely inferential. Now, a few questions, if I may. Be my guest. I have nothing to hide. I'd like to speak with the other competitor. He left the island. Mr. Dorfman was sure that the killer was after him. He is innocent, I assure you. Indeed, from his position it would be impossible to fire the bullet at such a downward trajectory, but he was a witness. Huh, shame. So, what transpired in the old ruins? Everything began as normal. The signatures, choice of weapons. I checked it all and then blindfolded the duelists. Erich stood to my left and his opponent, Mr. Dorfman, to my right. Before they could begin, the killer fired. And I'm sure it was not Dorfman. Why are you so sure? The sound was different. Not a Webley revolver. And further away. The killer must be an excellent shot to hit the heart. Did you or the other duelist see the murderer? No. The killer slipped away into the hills, so we turned our attention to Erich. Rest his soul. And neither of you pursued the culprit? I will not have my character impugned. We had only blank cartridges and a fallen friend at our feet. He was our focus. What transpired after the shooting? I heard Erich cry out and fall. Mr. Dorfman turned and fired at the killer, but I shouted at him to stop and help. I tried to save Eric, but it was too late. He was gone. You have a nice collection of pistols, Mr. Von Kram. Ah, a fellow connoisseur of firearms. Did something catch your eye? What caught my eye is a missing Lamat. Where is it? Ah, that one. I lost it in a bet. A rare failure of mine. A bet with whom? That's private, Mr. Holmes, and unrelated to your investigation. It seems you owed Mr. Von Staub a small fortune. A fortune to you, perhaps, but a trifle to me. Our debts ebbed and flowed. In our next contest, there was every chance I would win it back. Eric was too concerned about all that. Frankly, he often lacked the demeanor of a nobleman. His progressive tendencies could be grating. I can't help you with this. Last year, there was a similar incident in which a duelist died. What can you tell me? A tragedy. I shot too well, and my opponent stumbled from the impact. He slipped and fell down the cliff. I regret it all. I have not participated in a duel since. Instead, I only take the role of a referee and supervise the proceedings for safety. I swore that no other club member would die in a duel. Alas, someone else intervened. As it happens, a Lamat 42 caliber revolver was discovered at the crime scene. You said you were missing a Lamat, yes? I did, but my Lamat was a 36 caliber. And you can prove that? My word is proof enough. If I said it, it is true. Can we just get this over with? Look, Sherry, I'm head of the club. Arrived just yesterday. Addressed to Heinrich von Kram and written with a nervous hand. Doesn't appear to be the happiest childhood. Cecilia von Kram with Heinrich, Cologne, 1864. Mine. Wonder. Recordings labelled in Braille. Your ability to perceive the world can be developed with work and concentration.
You and Eric were competing for the position of honorary consul, yes? Quite the title. We were, but he stood no chance. Only a true nobleman could take such a role. Hmm. Difficult for him to contest it now. I need to be elsewhere. There must be more you can recall from the day of the duel. I... I wish. My eyes make me a poor witness, I'm afraid. Yes, your blindness. An affliction since childhood, one presumes. No scars on your face and you carry yourself with confidence. I'm starting to see your worth, Mr. Holmes. But this limitation developed your other senses and made you an excellent marksman. So, tell me, did you notice anything else? I do recall a floral smell. Something artificial. It was sweet and fresh and came from the direction of the killer. Do you recognize this scent? Yes. This is it. The smell I noticed at the ruins. Where did you get it? Do you know who killed Eric? Tell me his name. I need to be elsewhere. Good day, officer. Miss von Staub awaits you in her boudoir. Going on a trip, miss? No, I'm leaving permanently. This place brought me nothing but sorrow. I am sorry. What do you want? I think the time has come to be honest with each other, Miss von Staub. I'll start with my confession. I misled you in our previous meeting. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and I do not work for the police. What? I don't understand. In actuality, I was independently investigating your brother's death and came to an unexpected conclusion. How? Why? It was not a tragic accident, miss. It was cold-blooded murder. And I know the culprit. No. Who is he? Nice try, but as you well know, I'm talking to the culprit right now. What? Are you out of your mind? Certainly not. Allow me to explain how you killed your brother. The missing box in your brother's room contained a Lamat, the same weapon used for the murder. You stole it to kill your brother. What? No. Eric was obsessed with guns. I bet he simply left that revolver somewhere else. Yes, it was left somewhere else. The crime scene. Abandoned in panic. A typical feminine response. No, I've never been to that cursed place. You hid behind the wall in the ruins. None of the others present could have killed Eric from that position. Both the duelists were blindfolded and Mr. Von Kram is ill-sighted. So nobody saw anything? Your imagination has run wild. Ah, but you forget one thing. A blind man's other senses grow stronger. Mr. Von Kram detected a lavender and pine scent. That of your ointment. You're taking the word of a sightless man. This is monstrous. It is your brother who was monstrous. He was a tyrant and you could tolerate his abuse no longer. Living with Eric was a nightmare, yes. But he was my brother. I... Now, Miss von Staub, take your time. Tell me the truth. After our parents died, my life slowly became hell. My brother began to humiliate me. Then he became violent. Each day he'd invent a new punishment. Shut my room, burn my paintings, starve me. And without fail, I would be beaten. All visits were forbidden, all contact forbidden. I was his caged bird, his pet. When we did go out, he used me to bait influential people. He sold me to Mr. Boddington simply to earn a place amongst this island's elite. Was that not freedom from your brother? He sold me as a thing, sir. Who do you think this gentleman was? I could not endure more cruelty. Mr. Holmes, I'm begging you. Please don't do this to me. Don't throw me from one cage to another. You have suffered enough, Miss von Staub, but now it is over. I will not turn you into the police. I... I don't know what to say. What will happen with the case? The usual. 
With their typical stupidity, the inspectors will confidently declare the case a tragic accident, and that will be that. I... I didn't expect such kindness. Kindness? No, where the truth reveals injustice, I expect accountability, but in this matter, Miss von Staub, I see no injustice at all. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. I'll never forget what you're doing. <laughs>